Good evening, gamers, and welcome to High Score Headquarters, a show where we conquer digital dangers and terrific triumphs. Get ready to level up as we pack a bunch of video game headlines with a few side quests on the way. Stay in queue, you won't want to miss it. Our main objective for tonight begins with the conclusion of the League of Legends Worlds Tournament. We also have a look into some recent and upcoming game releases, including a dive into Atlas's newest turn-based title. We'll discuss Fortnite's recent controversial child protection changes. And finally, we have new information regarding the alleged end of the Overwatch League. All of that and more, tonight on High School Headquarters. Good evening, gamers. I'm Bradley Logan. And I'm Jacob Purdue. Thanks for logging in tonight. The grand finals of the annual League of Legends World Championship ran early on Sunday morning, featuring a clash between T1 and the unexpected underdogs, Weibo Gaming. Go the Gochiok Sky Dome in Seoul was at full capacity with almost 17,000 attendees. However, the event attracted over 6.4 million people at its peak. This viewership made League of Legends Worlds the first tournament in the world to surpass the 6 million concurrent viewers mark. The previous record for the highest world viewership was already broken during the first game of this year's grand final with over 5.9 million concurrent viewers, more than 400,000 viewers higher compared to the world's 2022 grand final. T1 chose aggressive and unconventional team compositions, but their outstanding map control kept them the heavy favorites in a dominant 3-0 series against Weibo. Weibo found early success in their games, but when it came down to full team fights, there was little Weibo could do to stop T1's oppressive comp. Top laner Zayus won Finals MVP, deservedly so, and Fager has become the first player ever to win four World Championships, all with T1. The final moments of Worlds 2023 were truly electric. Let's take a look at it here. It comes in, but he's still alive! What? It's going on, Fager tidies up the pass! Everyone's just exploding! Weiwei trying to get something done, but it does not matter. T1 are too strong. Four times T1 has lost in a game five. Four times they've been knocked out, and four times they have got back up for this moment. It was seven years since their last, a decade since their first ESKT legacy has been reignited. T1 will be your 2023 world champions. was their name when they had the first three, and now this team that so many adore will finally hoist the Summoner's Cup. And they've waited for it. Last year, the story wasn't about them. With the end of Worlds 2023, League Worlds 2024 was officially announced to be in the O2 Arena in London, England. I started playing League recently because of the worlds and I deeply regret it. <laughs> I may join you at some point, but not now. <laughs> right. Up next, we'll be jungling out in the studio to see what SGTV gamers have to say about their favorite video game soundtracks. Stay plugged in, you won't want to miss it. What's your favorite game soundtrack? Let me think. Uh, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time. Love uh, Song of Storms. Um, I gotta say Ocarina of Time. There's like no, I have nothing else in my brain but that only soundtrack. Uh, very iconic songs. I'm sorry, Del Fry, you are wrong. Song of Storms is not the best. It's just not. Um, but there are a lot of iconic tracks that you see over and over again in a lot of Zelda themes, like the Zora's Domain track. You also have the Tipple of Time, Zelda's Lullaby, classics. Upon a song, annoying, but kind of catchy. So gotta go with that soundtrack. Forza Horizon 2 because the amount of times I just bopped a hospital records radio, it's, it's just insane how much driving you can do to the same, like, oons, oons, oons beats. I think nothing in my vocabulary can fully describe how much the Minecraft alpha and beta soundtracks really matter to just sort of the whole idea of like a really good simple game soundtrack to me because when you know I started playing Minecraft when I was 10 and that's over 10 years ago now so having that soundtrack be as iconic as it is and just like the plain simplicity of like the game where at its like sort of infancy like in its origin stages 
that soundtrack harkens back to like sort of that time, like a very a much more simple time in I feel like my life and the lives of many others. So um, C418 created a true like masterpiece with that uh, entire soundtrack. Well, adding on to what Jonathan said, uh, he only likes you know the alpha and beta soundtrack of Minecraft, but I kind of like the entire thing. But specifically, uh, Aria Math, that that song's a banger. So I don't really play that many video games, but you know, growing up, I loved uh, Mario Kart soundtracks, so of Maple Treeway, Coconut Mall. Those are some bangers. So I mean, you can't go wrong with those songs. This is my favorite video game soundtrack. It's Civ. Civilization Six. Look, oh, oh, gosh, no, that's not what I'm we're supposed to like. Look how much there is. There's so much of it. You can listen to it. My favorite, specifically, is the Scotland one because I love bagpipes. It's like you know that song that's like, da, na, 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 na. it's so great. And you can listen to it for so long. I listen to it while I study, and it just bangs. It like it's like there's a theme for each country or for each civ, but then it like changes for each like era, time era that you're in. So I'm in, I'm in a kerfuffle, right? Because I want to say Stardew Valley because I really like that video game. But I said that for my favorite video game. So I will go with Sonic the Hedgehog, but specifically the Frontier soundtrack. You cannot tell me going into that first boss battle and listening to Undefeatable as you're flying around as Super Sonic is not the most based OST you've ever listened to. On top of stuff like Find Your Flame and so many more bangers. Sonic Frontiers has the best OST. I agree with this. I don't know how to... I agree with this as well. I agree with this. It's hard to pick, but there's three answers and they're all from the same series because it's the Persona series. <laughs> three, four, and five are literally the best soundtracks you'll ever listen to. Probably edge it out to four just because Backside of the TV, the Lotus Juice remix is just killer. But those songs are literally the best thing you'll hear. If you have not heard them, you are displeasuring yourself. True. Well, JW, everyone's been saying this and that and yada yada, but nobody's mentioned an absolute classic, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Oh my god! Illusionary Dance? Don't even get me started on Illusionary Dance, one of the best songs in all of music. I love the beepy whoops, I love the bah! I love the Phantom of the Opera type, I love the vampires, I love it's so bohemian. Yeah. Yeah, you know it's Castlevania. Probably Halo 3's, because, you know, while my favorite game is Halo Reach, Halo 3's soundtrack, uh, by Marty O'Donnell and all them, the way it swells in some of the key moments, it just feels like such a bombastic conclusion to the trilogy, which Halo 3 was. It just pairs itself with the game so well, and all the missions, and it's something I hold very near and dear to my heart. Halo 3 ODST, close second though, close second. Of course it's Hades, why wouldn't it be Hades? Have you heard Eurydice's um, farewell? It's heart-wrenching every single time that I uh, find her in wherever the that place is. Yeah, it's real good. It's what Tyler said. It's real good. Also, Orpheus's songs kill me every time. I think he's so funny. I hope you enjoyed taking a listen to some of our favorite songs. I've certainly picked up some new ones and added them to my video game playlist. Regardless, I'm Liv Moody, and I'm back to tell you about the latest game releases. To start us off, the middle of November has brought many major releases, all within days of each other. This release wave began with the launch of Super Mario RPG and Persona 5 Tactica. Super Mario RPG is a remastered take on the original Super Nintendo title, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. In this classic Mario adventure, players will quote, enter or revisit a world of whimsy with Mario on a quest to repair Star Road and defeat the troublemaking Smithy Gang, end quote. This title features multiple party characters, including Mario, Princess Peach, Gino, Mallow, and even Bowser? The remake also adds some new features, such as the brand new triple move, which changes based on your party's makeup. It can be used to deliver a variety of powerful effects. Super Mario RPG jumped into stores and the Nintendo eShop exclusively on Nintendo Switch, November 17th, and the game is rated E for everyone. Up next, we have Persona 5 Tactica, a new spin-off game of Atlas's hit title, Persona 5. SGTV gamer JW Cornerans has a review on this title for us this week. What have you got to say, JW? Persona 5 Tactica is the third officially released spin-off game of Persona 5, which is ironic considering that the Persona series was originally a spin-off of its own. 
Unlike others in the franchise, however, this title has its own take on grid-based tactical RPGs, comparable to that of Mario and Rabbids for the Nintendo Switch. This game seems to take place between the second and third semesters of Persona 5 Royal. So if you don't know what that means, uh, don't worry about it. One of the first major noticeable differences between this game and the original is the art style. The Phantom Thieves have been made more cartoonish, or chibi, one could say, very similarly to the Persona Q games. The rest of the art, however, is extremely Persona 5, with the black and red UI, menus, environments, and so on. Secondly, you cannot call a Persona game a true Persona game without an auditorially engaging soundtrack. Lynn returns as the main vocalist in this title, and while Rivers in the Desert will remain my favorite Persona 5 track, the new themes manage to capture that same energy from the original while also fitting with the pace of the tactical gameplay of this game. The gameplay element that I found the most fun in this spin-off was the combat. In Persona 5, enemies generally had type weaknesses and advantages depending on what element the move you used was. In this game, the elemental attacks are most centered around status effects and movement, disrupting the battlefield. For example, wind moves push enemies away while fire moves leave passive burn damage. Using these moves to push enemies into a combat scenario was always a very satisfying feeling. One of the few issues I had with this game was the lack of social links, which are used in previous Persona games to increase your party character's skills. They do remedy this issue with a skill tree so that every character can be individually upgraded, but this does also make dialogue in the game seem almost meaningless. I often found myself just mashing through words that I didn't want to read. As a casual fan of the Persona franchise, this game was ultimately just a fun time, but I would not recommend it to anybody that's unfamiliar with the original Persona 5, especially because the game expects you to understand who the Phantom Thieves are and what their abilities do. The game feels very easy to get into and simple to play, and does not require nearly as much playtime as the original title. For SGTV's High Score Headquarters, I'm JW Canarins. Thanks, JW. You can play Persona 5 Tactica on Xbox, PlayStation, Windows, and Nintendo Switch. The game also released on November 17th and is rated T for Teen. Finally, for what may be the biggest release in gaming history, we have Bluey the Video Game. <laughs> Bluey the Video Game is an interactive take on the beloved Australian animated preschool series. Players will be able to control the paws of each of the members of Bluey's family in this four adventure story exploring iconic locations from the setting of Bluey and participating in games from the show. The game also features cooperative play, so you can play with friends and family alike. Bluey the video game released on November 17th for the Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, and Windows. I'll be back later to share with you some of the upcoming major releases for the winter, but first, I'll be sending you back to Bradley and Jacob for more gaming news. Stay plugged in! Now, for the next level of our adventure, we have some news about some recent controversial changes to the hit battle royale game, Fortnite. Fortnite's new update on November 16th brought a lot of new content to the game, such as unvaulting certain weapons from older seasons and bringing back flyable airplanes. However, there's one addition that the community is not entirely comfortable with, a new age rating system. The update includes recommended ages that are assigned to any and all game modes, including maps in Fortnite Creative. The other related change is that players will not be able to use certain outfits with violent connotations in maps that are marked for younger children. For example, characters that have weapons or a gun holster attached to their skin would be banned from playing those game modes. Also banned are some outfits that could be frightening to young children, such as Marvel's Venom and Carnage. While this would seem like a good change for child protection, some outfits, such as Armored Batman Zero, have accessories that look like hand grenades and are not banned in children's gaming experiences suggesting that the measure may not be well implemented. <sighs> I think it's weird that the, <laughs> the, the teen part is for all modes, except for like the fact that the game's rated teen, but the fact that some things may be more mature. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you there. Well, the storm is closing on this story for the night, so now it's time for SGTV gamer Jonathan E to spotlight a retro element of game design in the next segment, Every Game, A Plaything. Hey, my name is Jonathan, and this is Every Game of Plaything, where I talk about video game design. When I was about 8 years old, my dad had purchased an NES bundle from eBay in order to share with me his memories playing through the games from his childhood. The biggest thing I learned from playing those games was this. They did not have it easy back then. The games were practically primitive, and they were so hard. Thankfully, we have an extra life. I break down the life system in video games into serving two purposes. 
The first purpose is to give depth to a game's challenge, and the second is to rake in the quarters. Before the life system, you had one run to rack up the points in an attempt to make a high score. A life constitutes a retry from a certain point, usually from the start of a level, a checkpoint midway through a level, or from the point in which you had just died. Lives can be lost through death, but they are capable of being gained through the obtaining of a score threshold, a certain number of special items, or even the discovery of a secret. When they were implemented, the management of lives gave the player strategies on what they were capable of doing. Do you sacrifice a life in Galaga so that you can gain double firepower on future levels? Or is that play too risky because it increases your hitbox and makes it easier to waste both lives in the process? Lose all of your lives, and it's game over. Being killed, getting a game over, and restarting the level or entire game from the very beginning can be very frustrating and may feel like a waste of time. However, these stakes may drive players to be more committed to playing the video game, which encourages them to continue playing on their run, which increases the number of quarters that they add to the machine. With every run you begin, you are graciously given a certain number of chances for the beginning of your game. It is most likely designed that the first couple of lies will lead you to your first big challenge where you may not have the advantage. Your character dies, and you have a choice to make. Either feed more quarters into the machine, or allow for all that time you had spent to be nothing more than a waste. In modern games, we are seeing less and less of the life system. Death in Mario Odyssey has you losing 10 coins at a time from your total, which harkens back to the link between currency and life. I guess only the poor have to worry about death. The checkpoint system, infamously the bonfire system in Dark Souls, allows for the player to slam themselves into the same challenge a million times until they succeed. If you're more of a fan of the old school system of single shot runs, roguelike games are similar to the old fashioned challenge of doing the most with only what you have, your one life to live. With the evolution of video games bringing us into an era of virtual reality headsets and full finger tracking, Many antiquated elements of older games had to eventually die out. What an interesting insight into video game design. Thank you, Jonathan, for providing that special feature for us. With that said, I am once again Liv Moody, and I'm back to bring you some updates on exciting upcoming releases. To start us off, we have Last Train Home, an epic survival journey inspired by the real events from THQ Nordic and Ashbourne games. In Last Train Home, players will embark on a desperate mission through the depths of a war-torn wasteland and unforgiving landscape of Siberia. Follow a compelling narrative that shows the experiences of a Czechoslovakic legion at the end of the Great War. The gameplay features real-time strategy and troop management, both in and out of combat, upgrading your train on the way through the Siberian winter. Last Train Home will release exclusively on PC this winter on November 28th and is rated T for Teen. Next up, we have Wizardom, a Doom-like retro shooter from Emberheart Games. Wizardom will put players into the role of a mage looking for the source of chaos, a dark source of evil. The game marks itself as a quote, speedrun friendly fantasy FPS tearing a page from the spell books of a 90s fantasy FPS classic, end quote. The game will also feature a custom level designer in-game that can be shared with other players. Solve puzzles, avoid traps, find secrets, and use a vast arsenal of magic spells and weapons when Wizardom releases on Steam November 29th. The game is rated T for Teen. I am very excited for these upcoming games. I'm very excited to get Bluey and play that for the first time. It's going to be a wonderful game. After the break, we'll be sending it back to Bradley and Jacob for one final story of the night. Don't unplug us just yet. For the final story of the night, there was more information regarding the possible end of the Overwatch League as we know it. Earlier this year, the Overwatch League saw an end to a fairly successful sixth season. While the League had its issues throughout the season, it held strong through wavering fear of collapse and harboring great storylines and hype moments to look back on. But like all things, the Overwatch League officially announced its end. Heavily hinted at through the uncertainty of losing teams and the active foundfall of Activision Blizzard, its end seemed all but guaranteed especially to the staff of the Overwatch League, saying thank you, the end of the Grand Finals. And now that we close this chapter, I think we should all just look back at it and remember the moments that took our breath away. We have to remember the friendships we got to form and the lessons that we learned. So from all of us, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being a part of this incredible journey. 
It's been an honor, a privilege, and a joy to share this experience with all of you. Thank you so much. However, there is light at the end of the tunnel. The league came out and said that it plans to look for a new form of possible competition, possibly even through a new esports model. While not every team will be around as the teams took the buyout, there is still one more year left to the Overwatch League contract to look forward to. Yahoo! Well, it seems like everything does have to come to an end, which the Overwatch League will be ending soon. Please. Don't. <laughs> I do not want it to. I didn't watch too much, but it will suck to see it go. But in other Overwatch news, the anticipated rework of Roadhog's kit has been officially rolled out. I have more details on that in the, our new short series, Patch Notes. That is everything gaming news we have this week. After the break, we're closing off the show with a familiar activity. Stay in the queue, you won't want to miss it. As you may know already, we're gamers, so we know video games. But how well do we really know video games? Today, we're once again going to put that knowledge to the test by guessing another game. The rules are simple. We're given six screenshots or clips from a video game. And we have to guess what that game is before the sixth picture. Let's jump right into it. Oh. I don't want to. I, I, I can't tell. Is this Sonic Adventure? It better not be. I see the red. No, it, it's not. It can't be Sonic Adventure. Can we see the next one? Nope. Is that the Eiffel Tower? What do you mean the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell. Oh. I, that's in a cave. Oh, Metacritic score. You forgot the Metacritic. We um, know. We know. Oh. I don't. I don't have this. It's one. another old game. All right. That helps a lot. Next one. <laughs> it's not oh. like Pikmin or something. Oh. It could be Pikmin. Oh, I. Mm. It might be Pikmin. I'm thinking it. That actually looks. I've a, never, I've never played a, or seen. Pikmin, that looks a lot like Pikmin. It's got the style. Close. Close. Pikmin two. <laughs> Is it, do we have to get like the the exact like number? Pikmin three. Pikmin one. You have to get the number. Okay. Do next one. That's Pikmin. That's a Pikmin. That guy right there. Yeah, yeah those are Pikmin. I'm saying Pikmin one because it looks old, older. I. Not yeah. One. It's not, not one. one. Dang. So is it Pikmin 2? Mm -mm. So, so is it Pikmin 3? No, Pikmin 3 looks too good. This is a... This is a Pikmin 2.5? This feels like a game with Pikmin's in it. I don't think a game with Pikmin. Is it Pikmin 4? Be... Oh, yeah, Pikmin 4. What? Those were so yeah. low res pictures. Those were actually so bad graphics that, that I was going really on. bad. For you did Pikmin great picking the, those pictures. Those are definitely better than- Hey, we, we got the game, all right? Yeah. <laughs> a bit worse than last time, but- This is just abuse. <laughs> well, it looks like our health bar is depleting, so unfortunately, we're gonna have to sign off for tonight's episode of SGTV's High Score Headquarters. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, X, and Facebook at SGTV at USC. To keep up with all of our content, be sure to also visit us online at SGTV at USC.com. For SGTV, I'm Bradley Logan. And I'm Jacob Perdue. From all of us here at SGTV, have a great night, gamers. Game over. Yippee! Pick me! 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 Pick me!